Yeah, yeah, great to uh, be here. Thank you. Cheers, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, yeah, been asked to just uh, explain a bit about what the, uh, the the album, the songs on the album, our fourth album, Look Directly Into The Sun, well, our third one really, the first one was Collection of Demos called Crack In The Box, and what the songs what the songs mean in it. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know, people were sort of interested in lyrics and stuff, and uh, sort of give a brief explanation of it. I mean, uh, first track is uh, Lunatic Moonchild, um, and I've always been affected by the moon. I've always um, known it has a presence, as a draw on us, and uh, it's important to the earth. I mean, we don't need it, you know what I mean? It's part of the earth, you know? Um, and basically, you know, there is a feeling you get when the moon's out. I mean, you know, lunatic comes from lunar, lunatic, and people go a bit mad at the full moon, you know? That, you know? that is a bit of a myth, you know? Because obviously in the old days when it was dark, there was... Uh, when there was no mood about it, it was really dark, so probably more crime went on and that sort of stuff. But you know, I get a feeling when it's going on. I know when there's a full moon. And uh, if it's like any energy, if you tap into it, if you tap into it, then you uh, can appreciate it. And if you don't want to tap into it, then you won't know about it, you know? And you can live your, your own little life unfruitfully, you know what I mean? <laughs> so Lunatic Moon Child's just about being affected by the moon and uh, and stuff and, and how it can be a positive thing, uh, if you let it be a positive thing. Next track, Preacher Man. You know uh, when you're um, in the pub, yeah? And there's people who've got nothing to say most of the time, yeah? And then as soon as they've had a few beers, they um, start to preach about everything, really. And they've got an opinion on anything. But it's an opinion that's based on um, themselves, really, and how uh, something affects them, yeah? And they become quite dogmatic with that opinion. Um, they exercise confirmation bias, and uh, you know they just uh, believe only what suits them, really. And uh, it's quite boring, isn't it? Because the only point, the point of any conversation is to uh, is to learn from it and to put your point of view across and listen to everyone else's point of view, and then um, remind them that you're right. And <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, and just uh, you know talk, and that's the only way you resolve any problem. You know what I mean? You don't resolve it with that. You resolve it with that kiss and talking to people that's the only way you ever resolve anything and that song's about them just uh, highlighting them people they get drunk and rant a lot <laughs> get drunk maybe say a bit too much on stage you know I don't know who these people could be but that's what it's about Preacher Man yeah and the third song Stockholm Syndrome which we have a great video for um, basically it's quite interesting the uh, the, um, the idea that uh, you could um, keep someone captive and um, they would, as the captor would think, they would come to like you and fall in love with you even and stuff like that. But really, it's the survival instinct working overtime, um, doing anything to survive basically, and uh, to get on with your captors and to uh, to uh, pursue some sort of emotional engagement is going to stand you stand you instead to to maybe get some sympathy and eventually get out of your situation. You know. It comes from the Stockholm Syndrome was from um, a bank heist in uh, in Stockholm in Sweden in the 70s, where the um, the captors sort of became friendly with the uh, with the kidnappers and stuff, and uh, ended up you know getting getting away and, and, and living because of it. Um, and it's become you know a term for anything like that. You know, it's happened many times. You know, we've, and uh, I thought it was fascinating. You know, it's um, many people are trapped in relationships and. Uh, their abusers, they get on with their abusers and they go back to their abusers and uh, it's, a, it's a strange game but um, it's, it's just a song about that really I and mean, then for people to think about it more and you know hopefully if, they, if they, anyone in that situation they'll, they'll have a bit more knowledge about this, about what's going on and be able to recognise the symptoms early, earlier than they might have done beforehand and uh, help them out maybe, I don't know, that's what we're here for. And the fourth song. Fucked up people. Strength, funny thing, really funny thing. Strength is that, isn't it? The bigger you are, bigger muscles you are. That's how strong you are, isn't it? Well, maybe not. Compassion, empathy, sensitivity. Those are the things that I find uh, are strengths because they're harder to to uh, to put into action. Really, you know what I mean? Anyone can tell someone to fuck off and stuff like that. Anyone can do that. You know what I mean? But um, it's much harder to. Uh, 
sit there in the face of something you, you find abhorrent even or threatening and try and talk, talk, talk to the person, show your soft side, show um, when someone's done something wrong to you, maybe look at them and think why have they done that wrong rather than, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna eat that cunt. Um, because it doesn't work, you know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't stop people from doing it. it. It might for a little bit, you know, but they'll be always wanting to get you back. They'll be wanting to do something more to you. Um, so it's about that, and, and it's the way that fucked up people, you know, it, it, it says fucked up, sensitive, weak, you know. I mean, weakness, what does that mean? What does weakness mean? Think about it, what does weakness mean? Weakness means, in this day and age, that you um, change your mind all the time. Um, that you don't want to hit someone, you know? Not weakness to me. The fucked up people are beautiful people. And uh, the alternative people are always called fucked up. Oh, look at him, he's got funny hair, he must be fucked up, yeah. Okay, probably is, but what's your definition of fucked up? You know, think about it. That song's about that. Good video for that coming soon. And the fifth song, Kill Your Friends. Um, Kill Your Friends is a phrase I've, I put on one of the first t-shirts when on trial played. And it came from uh, Nirvana. It came from Kurt Cobain um, when he did that magnificent performance of Smells Like Teen Spirit on Top of the Pops. When he... Uh, sung different words because he was pissed off by the song by then and pissed off with the commerciality of Nirvana and what they'd become and he said he, the opening verse was load up on drugs kill your friends and I love that because sometimes you do want to kill your friends because because you're so close to them because you invest so much energy and emotion in them it gets it pisses you off more when they let you down and they will let you down I mean it's naturally and it's natural I let people down believe it or not yeah I do <laughs> um, and your friends will let you down eventually and uh you just got to be prepared for that and not let not let it be, you know, such a big thing because it, it will happen. Don't be so hurt by it because they're your friends. Oh my God, I couldn't believe you did that because he's my friend. And he's also a normal person who will do them things. And when you're closer to someone, you know, you tend to uh, be, it tends to be easier to do that for some reason or you tend to be able to, you know, let out your emotions quickly. You know, same as you, with your family and stuff. You know, your friends are your family really anyway, anyway aren't they? So that sounds about that really. Night Night Succubus. Ah. It's really just a comment song, really, um, about having night terrors and stuff. And uh, succubus is the the spirit that comes to you. You know that feel when you're you're in in sleep paralysis, and you feel like um, you can't move, and you wake up and you, you actually feel. And you can almost, sometimes you can see. I mean, you can see devils and that on top of you, you know, and trying to get you and holding you. It feels like someone's holding you down. Um, sometimes it's sexual. It feels like they're trying to enter you. Um, and uh, you know, in not in a good way. <laughs> and um, it's about that really, and it's just a comment that I get it quite a lot, I have them quite a lot. Um, I'm a lucid dreamer. Um, I know how to uh, to get into my dreams and stuff like that. And uh, But the night terrors come with that. Um, and I quite enjoy them, you know, because I can actually be inside them. And when, I actually, I wear a blindfold uh, to, uh, to sleep, especially in the summer, you know, like total blackout now and stuff and what I was having one the other day and I could actually see and, and see the devils and for once they're on top of me usually they try and come from behind um, you know again not in a nice way <laughs> and they were actually inside my blind fire. I could see them physically it was it a manifest in, in there and they were going through but I realised I was in a night terror and I knew that as soon as I could force my eyes to wake, to, um, to wake up I'd be okay and see my room properly and be able to move my limbs and stuff you know? so it's an interesting thing and yeah some, some was, um, it's not really you're not really being afraid of it and thinking, you know, enjoy it. These things, if, you, if you're if you aware of them, you can realise them when they actually happen and enjoy them. You know, why not? Uh, sixth song, I think it is. Uh, Diamonds and Water. Basically, um, just a song about the material world. Um, how boring it is, really. You know, we're all in it. We all love it. And it's easy. It's like a quick fix you know some, buy some stuff get some things in your hand you know it's great you know you can do stuff with them but they don't really mean nothing in the end you know um, if you lose them it's tough I mean you know I have um, connection issues which I'm, I've dealt with um, still dealing with and um, you know they're there but the main thing is the song is called Diamonds and Water because we all have diamonds and they cost a stupid amount of money why because they're sparkly and that yeah and my theory is that Originally, the reason we like sparkly things is because when we used to search for water and stuff uh, back in the day, back in the day, you know, 
back in time so we didn't have a running out of tap for it. And we had to find water. When we saw the sun sparkling on the water, hitting the water and sparkling, it was amazing. And we just thought it was glorious. We could, you know, we could, we could quench our thirst and drink and stuff. But so we've always been attracted to sparkling things, you know? You know, and the ancient people would, would probably found some diamonds in, 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 in a cave or something like that. I thought, well, they're quite nice and stuck them on the, uh, on the arm. Yeah, nothing. It meant nothing more to them. They've got less, less than water would have been to them because water would give them life. It's just fun. It's just nice. But they associate that, that with the, the sun sparking off the water. So the song's just about that, thinking about diamonds and water, you know, what's the difference? We pay a hell of a lot more for, for diamonds, well, the price of water is going up, ridiculously. But um, yeah, that's it, think about it, what means more to you, a glass of water, a glass of beer, maybe water, or a diamond on your ring, or what's the one way people get married on, yeah, the track, that one, yeah. Anyway, that's cool. Moving on, In the Night. Basically, a full-on punk song about direct action. You know, the internet is brilliant and you can campaign a lot on the internet. People do do a lot of talking on the internet and stuff. And, uh, you know, and, you, and it's great to sign the petitions and that is brilliant. And, and it's great to, to do posts on, on online and stuff and, and make people aware, maybe pass on information that people aren't privy to and stuff like that. But I'm sorry, it's still direct action is what you have to do, you know. Um, obviously, you can do more, but, you know, Kind of near the three strikes and out or in, if you know what I mean. So, got to be careful on that one, but I still do what I can. I'm not a vandal anymore. I used to think that if I smashed everything up, the system would eventually come down. Kind of stupid now. But you know, I did that when I was like 17, uh, 14, so like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it's good on, put on Punk Song. Good video on YouTube as well for that. Check it out on Trial UK in the night and a world of videos. Nice one. Danger Stranger. We're all living in fear. A lot of the fear is manufactured, um, given out to us for reasons uh, that you can't control a population that isn't living in fear, basically, you can't. Um, so that's why the news is doom and gloom, the papers are doom and gloom, everything's going wrong, Everywhere, it's, everyone's trying to kill each other, everyone's trying to molest each other. ISIS is coming to kill you, you know what I mean? Um, it's marching across the land and, and an army, you know, a fully equipped army of about 50,000, you know, and not whatever it is, you know. Um, and that, that just, um, that just um, manifests in the heads of, of, of deranged people who will join these city groups and um, because they're, they're living in fear. Anyone who goes and blows up someone um, or blows up a lot of people, they're living in fear as well. They're living in fear of of God, you know what I mean? Of God telling what to do. This is this is a, a platform, you know. This is a platform the way you've got to prove yourself to go on to a um, another life, you know. I mean, you know, you know, it's an old trick that they've used for years and years and years, you know. You know, from the Vikings who went to go to Valhalla, you know, they, as long as they died on the battlefield, they would go to Valhalla, you know. So they would fought, they would fight tooth and nail for the, you know, for the for the king or who was, who was in control or whatever, you know. Uh, the leaders to to you know job done quite clever really but you know what I mean and they still do, they still do it now you know when they you know well you know we're, we're starting to learn a bit you know the first world war I'm fighting for king and country you know what I mean yeah why what for what did that achieve nothing just they're just arguments between families usually you know high up families you know what I mean that's that's what it is you know and um, they don't care about the people down there. They're the cannon fodder. They're the you know the way the Victorians used to used to bugger the fucking working class, you know, I mean, or do anything to them. Um, and then have a high moral standing in their own circles because they thought of the working class as an underclass, you know. And as soon as you demonise any any people, you know, you know if you demonise you demonise Muslim, Muslims now, you know, you show enough Muslims on, in the papers, enough Muslims on the TV, and show them associated with the the crimes that some of them do, like any well, like we like anyone does then you eventually will start thinking oh every muslim does this every muslim is this every muslim is that no you know i'm just mentioning muslims at, at the moment because it's in in the news at the moment uh 2017 this is june or something yeah that's it you know so danger stranger is about you know back, and then it goes back it, it talks about how you know your mum and dad used to say there's a monster under your bed if you don't be careful i'll let the monster out the wardrobe so, you know what i mean I'll, or the boogeyman will get you that sort of thing you know all rubbish all bollocks don't live in fear you know Go out there. If you bump into a nasty person, you are really, really, really unlucky. You know what I mean? Because I guarantee, if you walk out any day of the year anywhere in the world, 
you'll walk past hundreds and thousands of really nice people who want to get on. Yeah? And they would, if they were allowed to. Simeon. Simeon. Um, basically, it's a song, a um, little bit of a departure from what we usually do. It's quite a folky song. Um, three verses, no chorus. Um, basically, about we're all the same. Simeon sounds like similar, but it actually means. Um, well, I'll let you. I'll let you look at the meaning for the actual word, the direct, the literal meaning of the word, and then it it takes me back to how we where we came from, where the Homo sapiens came from. You know, however, you know, there's it's in debate at the moment where it was two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred years ago, Homo sapiens um, started starting evolving and stuff from from everything else and. Uh, you know, it, it, which is, think about it, 500, even if it was 500,000 years in, in the length of the time that the world has been alive, there's nothing in it. And look, what, look what we've done, look what we've achieved, look what brilliant stuff we've achieved, but look what horror we've also put on the world. You know, whatever. Anyway, it, it, it talks about, and it goes back to um, where, um, where we think life started in, in Africa, or where, or where Africa is now, you know, part of, a really part of Pangaea, when, it was, when we were all one landmass. Um, but it was it was Africa, Ethiopia, the lake, the lake, the banks of Lake Tana, you know, and all the same. If only if only these if only people realised that, you know, the colour colour of our skin is just because of the different places we've gone in the world and how we need to deal with the sun. If people would realise that, you realise there aren't there is no black race or white race or any or, or any other race. There's just the human race. That's it. This song's about that, really. Okay, um, next one. Love makes me sick. Well, the title sort of explains it, but maybe not. Love doesn't make me sick like I'm sick of it, I hate it. It makes me physically sick. Oh my God, I can't deal with it, that sort of thing. Um, so it's, it's a love song, but ultimately saying, you know, it's gonna be tough when I fall in love. Well, it was tough, but um, it, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a, bro a bind, but you know, it's worth it in the long run, I suppose. And uh, <laughs> didn't mean that sound like that, but um, it is worth it in the long run. But it will make you sick if you're really in love. You will be fucking in knots, and you'll go for all extremities of emotions that um, you will deal with better and better every time it happens to you as you grow up and uh, grow up and as you grow up through life. You know, never grow up. But you know, that's that's it really. Just be prepared. Something about that really. Thank you. Out of control. Um, yeah, you can. Out of control was just I'm angry, about I'm angry. someone who's, who's lost it, who's given up, you know, because life will get you down, life will test you, life will fuck you up, life will really, really push you and push you until you think you've had no more, until you can't have no more. And some people will crack, you know, and they will do some stupid things. And that's. Um, but you know, and, you know, it's difficult, but you know, there are reasons for it. There are reasons for it. There's reasons. What's happened to him in life? All sorts of stuff. And people say, well, that's a wishy washy liberal point of view, but okay, let's just shoot dead every single person who makes a mistake. Let's just shoot them dead. You know what I mean? That's easy, isn't it? You know? Or, or we do our best to try and make that person better. Um, and that's what I believe, I and mean, it's fucking tough. I mean, and I, you know, who knows what something happens to me personally, how I deal with that, or, so, or how I feel then. Of course, I, of course, I feel different. Um, well, you know, maybe I wouldn't. But you know, and um, you know, we have to as, as a site do that. The main thing is because unless you shoot them all dead, um, then they, 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 you know, and if you just put them in prison or something and leave them to rot and don't try and help them, then they will do it again. But if you try and save someone, then you know. That's got to be a good thing, isn't it? Because life is life, you know, and it's up to you what you think about life, whether you think it ends when you die. I personally don't, but um, you have to think about life in, 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 in all sorts of contexts and the life of the person that maybe someone killed. Think about their life in context and think about is, there, is that life gone justified by just killing another life? And what happens if you get it wrong? It's just things to think about. Little opening gambit from uh, Chris Spivey, who is um, uh, a journalist, author, and uh, researcher. And um, 
he's just uh, he opened my eyes to lots of, lots of uh, lots of things, yeah. And um, I'm not going to make any comment on whether I believe everything he says or whether I don't believe anything he says because that's up to you. But check him out, check his web page out, and um, have a look there because read through all the stuff, read through it, and it will change your way of thinking about lots of things. And it, not necessarily the things he's talking about or, or writing about, but it will open your mind to thinking in the future about stuff. So there you go. And then we come to the last song. Gold Machine, Woo-hoo. and uh, on our albums we like to have a little, well, a big sort of song at the end, you know, sort of uh, not an anthem. I wouldn't say we're um, we're even that popular enough to to have anthems, but um, uh, <laughs> but we like a big song at the end. Um, Mexican Girl should have been the one at the end of um, Neuro Law, but you know we hadn't really thought of the concept by, at that point. <laughs> We've only done it in the last two albums, but anyway, uh, Gold Machine, yeah, it's about. Um, it's like a in it, the the, um, the tune of it, which Fuzz came up with. Well, he comes up with 90% of the tunes. I come up with the odd one, and he bashes them into shape. Um, uh, and it was a great. It sounded like a 70s rock song, and we just jammed it for a laugh, and uh, just you know, just getting together, warming up. I said, "We've got to use this. This is so cool." And um, I, put, I just threw some lyrics down really quickly to it, and then um, the chorus and stuff, and the idea, and the idea about it, and then um, we got it together really quickly and banged it out. And we we end up playing, we, we end up getting uh, getting requested live shows, and we played it I think last week actually at the rap, first Rat Infestation Festival, which is going to continue on with the great success that we the great success we had with it, even though none of, none of our friends actually turned up, but the strangers turned up. It was actually brilliant, which was amazing. So it just shows you that you have to rely on your friends. See that fifth song, Kill Your Friends. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, it's a good song, and it's, it's about the 70s, and I love the 70s. I think it's great. I think it's a magnificent era of, like, you know, freedom, almost anarchy, because, you know, there wasn't the control around. There wasn't, you know, you could go, but of course there was a dark side to it, and a horrible side to it. I'm sure they scratch me ass on that. Yeah, I'll leave it in. Fuck it. No editing here. No editing. And, um, it's basically, you know, uh, all that, all that bollocks, you know, all that groovy backstage rubbish, you know, fucking, you know, a lot of abuse going on, you know, that's, that's really what it comes to. And a lot of these bands now are sort of um, held in high esteem, and you know, some of the stuff they did was just too horrible. It was just too crap, and uh, I think it should be highlighted. I'm not saying, you know, it was all, all like that or. Right, I think, um, and maybe they have thought about it deeply now, and they probably think, oh my god, I was a bit, a bit just young and stupid. And, you know, that's, that's fair enough, but you know, talk about that, you know? It's not all fucking laugh about it, you know? There's a line in it, hedonism isn't about control, it's all about fun, and that's rock and roll. There you go. And also, in fact, it, it, the chorus mentions, um, I was talking about Led Zeppelin, by the way, uh, it mentions Led Zeppelin, it also talks about Charlie Manson and the CIA, and uh, you know, you got to look into the, you got to look into Charlie Manson, and uh, he changed. He definitely. Changed. I mean, he's almost as as, um, as poignant as, as any as any rock band, um, as any any. But he changed the way of thinking. You know, again, it goes into the way uh, the way of how people were so dis. You know, people are disenchanted, dis franchised. This what the word is from from life and society. They will go to these people. You know, they will. You know, they'll go to these extremes, and you know. But it's basically society is not giving them what they want to do, uh, what they want, or giving them the freedom to be themselves, you know, or even or having their own identity. So, you know, okay, yeah, sorry, uh, I had my phone on flight mode there, as I'm videoing on phone, but I've got to turn the internet off. I didn't think it would come through on flight mode, but anyway, got interrupted there. Uh, yeah, so the song's about, you know, check it out, read about Charlie Manson, read about the CIA's involvement in it, and read about Led Zeppelin and their. They're ridiculous antics and, and, and stuff, and uh, you know, make your own mind up. But enjoy the 70s. The 70s was freedom. The 70s was was a great era, and it's great to be retro. I don't mind being retro. I like. I live in the present. That's a fact. But um, and I love the I love the thought of the future. But it's also good to look back in the past, and you know what I mean. Let's recreate the 70s. A couple of nights. Could be fun. Okay, cheers. Uh, the album's called Look Directly Into The Sun. It's available um, on Headcheck Records, available on Spotify, and it will be available soon on our website, which is www.ontrial.uk. 
Um, I'll flash up everything in a minute. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'm not going to edit this video at all. It's going to go out exactly as it is. And I try and put the things underneath. Whatever. I don't need to tell you this. Um, yeah, buy the album. Come and see us live because uh, we're not strictly a punk band. Yeah, we are a punk band, but don't seem to fit in with anything. Um, we don't really have an image um, in one. We don't just just do our own thing. And um, you can catch us live. Sometimes we're good, sometimes we're bad, sometimes we're sober, sometimes we're drunk, sometimes we're in a good mood, sometimes we're in a bad mood, sometimes we can be bothered, sometimes we can't be bothered. Um, yeah, we always be bothered, but sometimes us not being bothered is us being bothered, if you know what I mean. And one thing is firm, we're always going to have a beer with you, and we'll always have some fun, we'll always have something to say, uh, you might not like it, but... Or defeat, because they've lived in such a great twilight that they've never tried either one. Was I just did the... Uh, fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could, and that's just what I'm doing.